He's like, thank God that you came in. He's like, you have to go into surgery right now. If you don't go right now, you are going to die. If you would have waited one more day to have the surgery, you would have died. That's related. Um, instantly I get an x-ray um, with that x-ray the doctors like immediately rush in and he's like we have to take her into surgery right now and my family they don't know what to do my grandma gets on the phone and called my pastor and um, this is all the way up to where I remember so I'll tell you what I remember and I'll let you know where people started filling me in so I remember my grandma gets on the phone with my pastor at the time and calls and says Janice is going into the emergency room and going into emergency surgery can you get here so we can pray so he tried to get here as fast as he can he barely he got there right in the nick of time like right when they were rolling me back he prayed right in between me going into the operating room and me leaving the hallway so right there we stopped and we prayed and that's literally all I remember and no, I remember him giving me the anesthesia and telling me to count backwards. I remember that too. So then um, I go through a first surgery. So this is go through a first surgery, which is a huge abdominal surgery where they open me from right under a little bit under my breast and all the way to the top of my pelvic wide open and they had to clean out. So what they diagnosed me with was a ruptured appendix. And that was so toxic. Even though your appendix is so small, it is a very toxic if it gets to the point where it's very inflamed and it explodes. That's where it got to for me. And that toxicity and that, that poison spreads out through your entire body. So I was so sick for so long that when I finally went to the hospital, it had spread all in all inside my intestines, like where all my other vital organs were, like it was just everywhere. And my, I remember my doctors had said like, what, why you didn't come in any sooner? Like what, what was going on? And we honestly thought that it was just like a stomach flu, but um, I just wasn't getting better. So it was just fine for me, time for me to go out. He's like, no, he's like, thank God that you came in. He's like, you have to go into surgery right now. If you don't go right now, you are going to die. If you would have waited one more day to have the surgery, you would have died. And I just looked at my grandma like, I'm scared. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So we get into the surgery. My pastor comes, he prays. And I remember counting down and, they, and you know, doing the anesthesia. And um, this is where the family starts filling me in. No, I remember going to, I was, so I had two surgeries. I had one surgery at the regular hospital where I was at. And then I had to be flown to a children's hospital where I had another surgery just to make sure everything was out. And that I was given the proper medications, you know, things like that. And I was under the care of a pediatric doctor and doctors that, that have dealt with these situations. So I remember being flown in a flight for life vividly. I just remember hearing the helicopter. I remember hearing voices around me and that's it. And I knew that I was in the helicopter. That's all I know. So they told me that I was flown in flight for life to Children's Hospital, which was where I was staying at the time was maybe like 30 minutes um, in a helicopter, 30 minutes away. And so that happened. I went to the hospital, I had another surgery and um, Glory be to God, I'll heal from that situation. I have, to this day, I've grown to love. I'm gonna insert a picture as well of my scar. I have a scar, very long, on the top of my, um, a little bit under my breast, all the way down, like past my belly button, all the way to the top of my pelvic. And right now, like, people, like, I know people love it and they accept me, but it took a long time for me to love and accept that part of myself. Because, you know, being younger, I went from like, you know, thinking I was cute and like, now I have this scar, I'm not gonna be cute, I'm not gonna be found attractive, things like that. So now to, now I love it, I will wear what I want, I will do what I want, but before I will wear like two t-shirts, like so it's not seen, it's not noticeable because I do have a scar and also a keloid. So now there's like, you know, raised parts of skin that's down there as well. So I was very, very, very insecure about that. But I'm gonna insert a picture of that scar as well. And now I love it. I learned to accept myself and I allow myself to be accepted by those who are going to accept me. And um, yeah, so that was just a part of my testimony of me being healed at the age of 12 and God saying, no, her time is not done yet. It is not over yet. So that's a little bit of a backstory. Um, I was in the hospital for two months. I um, had to learn to walk, to read, you know, stand for periods of time. When I finally got out the hospital, I still had the sutures. So I was watching, walking like hunched over the entire time. And then when I went to go get the um, stitches out, I was able to stand up straight. So it was, 
I was gaining more and more independence out, outside of being in the hospital, which I was very thankful for. I did my therapy inside the hospital, things like that. And that backstory is also why I chose to go in the field that I'm in to be a nurse and eventually a pedi pediatrician and to help kids that was in the same predicament as me. So that is a part of my testimony as well. I chose to go in a career where I saw the nurses firsthand. I saw the doctors firsthand for, with a sick child and, and figuring out ways to communicate and make me feel comfortable because I had feeding tubes. I had pick lines like I had so much stuff inside of me that when those things were when it was time for those things to come out it was the most terrifying thing ever I didn't want them to pull you know something out of my throat and they were feeding me through it but I didn't realize it but when it's time for it to come out like I was just like I don't want to do this and then also the pick line so a pick line goes from your arm down here goes all the way up inside here and it like hangs and it's like you know a source of oxygen and it goes to your heart things like that so like if you need anything done or blood work or whatever like that's just some more what nurses use you know to get um if you're severely sick and not have to keep you know trying to find different things and things like that so i had pig lines i had you know feeding tubes i had scars that they had to change and dressings that they had to change and you know, sitting back, sitting and talking about it now gives me flashbacks and gives me chills. But God, that was just a, another time where God said, no, not yet. It is not your time. You are going to live and be an inspiration. And um, I was still very young to realize that. Um, but I just now I know that God could have literally took me home. But it just wasn't, that was legit the start of my purpose. Like me getting sick was the start of me, of, of me getting to where I am now. Did I know that? No. But can I see it now with the reflection and talking to God? Definitely. And the things that was prophesied over my life these past couple of years, I definitely see like that was the start for me. So I don't know. I just, I'm just going to go to the next point because this stuff kind of gets me emotional, but a happy emotion because I'm blessed and I'm delivered. And at the age of 12, we don't think something like that drastically is going to happen. Um, so it just all came into fruition or all makes sense what my most recent pastor, she said to me, this is what she prophesied over my life in church one day. And she said, God told her, even in your mother's womb, God had a plan for you. I now understand that I was brought into this world for a reason. If God felt like, you know what, this is time for me to take my child back home, he would have did it then. But instead, he allowed me to go through those things and allow me to, you know, add, it's going to be adding to my character and building me and making me into the woman I am today. And I'm just so grateful, so thankful that God is now putting all these pieces together in my life. I felt so lost and so alone at some point because I really felt like there was not one person in this world that can fully 100 wholeheartedly get the type of person that I am, why I make the choices I make, why I feel the way I feel, why one, why moment, why one moment I'm happy, the next moment I just want to be by myself, like why next one moment I'm shy and next moment I can be super talkative and not know how to be quiet. And God allowed me to go through that. You know, I'm just starting to pick on my edges. He allowed me to go through that and, you know, see the goodness in him through my, my life. So this is just part one. I do just want to stop this video because this can get very long. Um, but that's just a little bit of backstory of what happened to me when I was 12. So I'm going to insert pictures. Um, I want you guys to um, be witness to my vulnerability. I'm okay with it right now and I'm not where I am right now in my faith. It's time for me to share my story and not to be ashamed of it anymore. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are not following me on TikTok and Instagram, they're both underscore Nisi J. Got you guys follow me on Insta, YouTube. Because <laughs> my, my, my mind wants me to keep talking about it, but I will. this video will literally be so long. But I want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Your girl be legit having fun on TikTok. I'm so addicted to it now. So if there's anything that you guys want to see, if there's something that you guys want me to go over, I know a couple people did DM me about, um, on Instagram, not on YouTube, about doing a skin tear, skin tear, a skincare routine, which I do have that in the works. Um, I have like I have a basic skincare routine. I have a in-depth skincare care 
I have a basic skin care routine. I have an in-depth where I use like my facial steamer and all of those things. And I have a nightly routine and then like what I do to go to prepare for work in the morning. So I have four type of skincare routine videos that I want to have out for you guys. So I'm going to get those prepared, but I want you guys just to continue to follow this journey of my testimony and me allowing my vulnerability to speak. And I hope you guys enjoy. Until next time, I love you guys. Peace.